Hello guys, today I'm going to start another new series. This time it's going to be a slurry tank build. And this is a Britain's slurry tank. It's a, it's quite a basic model. It only has a little frame and a plastic tank. And my plan is to fit a pump into this and a little water tank so that we can pump uh, well basically just spray some water at the out of the nozzle here, this nozzle is just a plastic nozzle, so we're going to have to replace that with uh, with a bit of tubing. But it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, the model itself, like I said, is pretty basic. The tyres are rock solid. They're maybe not as good as uh, the CQ tyres that you get on the tractors. But uh, then again, I've never had a model with flotation tyres from CQ, so they could be just as hard. Uh, it has a little cap here. I, I've drilled a hole in the top of the cap and uh, basically I, I intend to fill the water in there. Uh, I've already taken this apart so this, this little pipe just comes with it, just comes off. It's not actually not actually a pipe, it's just a little bit of rubber. Um, but I've already taken this tank apart. Uh, what I done to do that was I put the screwdriver in under this little piece here because I thought this would be the least noticeable you know you, you can't really see where I was damaging it if you're looking down on the tractor well, you can see a little bit there but basically I put a very thin screwdriver in here uh, I put this this end on something uh, solid with uh, a little bit of uh, sponge to stop the back getting scratched and then I just tapped the screwdriver in here until I was able to lever the the body apart and just move it, move the screwdriver around slowly, levering a little bit more each time until I was able to cut the top off like this. And as you can see, it's got lots of little uh, connections all around, and that's why uh, I was just levering it slowly so that I could break a few of these each time without damaging the whole model. So that's how I got it apart, and probably the easiest way to get it apart. And as you can see, once you get it apart, you have quite a lot of space inside the model. So, the first thing we're going to have a look at today is the pump. So, here is the pump that I have for this model. Uh, my plan is to mount the pump here somewhere, make a little water tank that will fit here, and then uh, jet the water back out through here, I'll make a little nozzle for it. I plan to use a 7.4 volt battery uh, which should be able to fit in the top here. I need to uh, cut away some of this uh, supporting structure on the top and just here and on the bottom here to let the pump and the battery sit one on top of each other. And then if you see there's quite a bit of space around here so I could put the... Uh, this motor is only one direction, it's only going to pump in one direction. So instead of a motor driver chip, I'm just going to use a MOSFET. So the MOSFET is going to sit in around a bit here somewhere. Actually, I might have to put the MOSFET on the water tank because uh, the MOSFET might get hot. And if I put it on the water tank, the water should dissipate the heat a little bit. And uh, the rest of the electronics should be able to fit in around the motor some way. I'll have to use the uh, the little uh, triamp regulator board that uh, we've seen in a previous video to regulate this voltage so that it can uh, so that it can power the tractor. The final thing that I'll have to do then is just add some LEDs to here. So that's not a big job. We've done that many times. The software for this is probably going to be pretty much the same as the tip trailer, only changed for to drive a motor instead of. Uh, uh, instead of, well, the other one was driving motor, but this is going to be only in one direction, so there's probably not much need to change it by a huge amount. Here's the little test circuit to test our pump. It's basically the same as our motor control test circuit, only instead of the motor driver, we have a MOSFET here. So our Arduino. It's going to read a voltage which is going to be changed by this potentiometer. Based on that voltage, it will create a PWM signal. The PWM signal connected here connects to our MOSFET here on the same pin as this 10K resistor. 
Now the reason for that is the 10k resistor is a path to ground. So when uh, when this signal is not high, so when it's not at 3.3 volts, the pin, the input pin or the control pin, I suppose you could call it, for the MOSFET is going to be at zero volts. So that will turn the MOSFET off. So the MOSFET then is going to drive our motor in much the same way as an NPN transistor would. Uh, this MOSFET I'm using is an IRL540N and it's working pretty good for this for this application. Now you'll see in the middle here we have our uh, voltage or step down regulator that we had or that I showed you in one of the previous videos. So it's going to take my 7.4 volt battery here and it's going to step that down to 3.3 volts for the Arduino. Now the 7.4 volts uh, is the voltage that I'm going to use to drive the motor. So the battery will be connected here and the motor will also be connected here. The ground of the motor will go to this pin here, the central pin of the MOSFET. And when the MOSFET, uh, we'll, we'll say when the MOSFET switches, it will connect to here, which is our ground connection. And that will complete the circuit for the motor. Now we're going to go now and test uh, at what voltage the motor works best, or rather at what pulse width modulation. So I have a feeling this motor is going to be a bit too powerful for this uh, for this application. I think it will be spraying water pretty far, like a, a number of times, maybe five or six times the length of the trailer, which is not very realistic. So we need to. I think we're going to need to step down the power of the motor. If if the motor is not that powerful, then we won't need a, a pulse width modulation at all. We'll just switch on the MOSFET, and that will do. But I'm pretty sure this pump is going to be too strong. So we'll go out now and test our speed of our motor to get our best kind of approximation of a realistic spray. Well, here's the setup with the MOSFET, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work. We don't seem to be able to provide enough power to spin the motor. So the only option that's left really is to give it a go with our motor driver chip. See does that work. So I tried with the motor driver chip as well and that didn't seem to work. It, it was starting to get very hot. So if we look at the current here it's it's over it's over four amps so it's probably best to just um it's probably best to just switch this with a relay. That's probably the, the easiest way and not have any speed control, just turn it on, turn it off, very simple. Well, powering the pump with the motor driver didn't work, powering the pump with the MOSFET hasn't worked. So the only option is possibly to use a relay like this. However, we'll end up with the, with the motor going constantly uh, at full speed. So that may be not be the perfect solution. So maybe one last effort that I'll make. I'll use a boost, a DC to DC boost converter like this one. And what this basically does is you, you put your input voltage here from your battery. So that'll be our 7.4 volts. And we adjust the potentiometer here. And that raises the voltage on this side. Now this motor should be good to 12 volts I think. So we'll put the 7.4 volts in and we'll boost this up to 12 volts at the minute with over 4 amps uh, we couldn't expect our motor driver chip to work because it's only rated to about 3 amps so maybe at 12 volts we'll be able to reduce our current maybe to 1 amp and then we should be fine so make sure and subscribe and you'll see the follow up video where I attempt the 12 volt uh, version of the design first and if that doesn't work we'll try a relay and hopefully that will work and after that we'll be adding our lights and our rest of our circuitry to our um, our slurry tanker here and hopefully we'll be able to get a useful little accessory so if you like that video give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments or any suggestions on how to do it uh, post them below in the comments 
and or possibly in the forum and uh, that's everything so thanks very much for watching